All right, so we have been marching forward on a series during the month of August to better our understanding of how our vehicle is wired to work. And I know you've been doing absolutely fantastic with this work. Thank you, Patrick has been working. So was anybody aware of your emotions this past week? Yeah. Oh, good, 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 okay. That makes me very happy. I don't even care what you chose to do afterwards, just to awaken to it. This is the first step. All right, well, today we're going to talk about um, the heart. Um, I know, you guys, if you're younger, this may be common knowledge to you, but in my lifetime, in my lifetime, they started doing heart transplants. They were not done when I was a little baby. They were not done even, I don't believe, when I was an adult. <laughs> but so it was a brand new thing. And they were very successful, but the thing that they discovered when they would do a heart transplant is that some of the thoughts, desires, memories of the donor would start appearing in the life of the recipient. And it was a marvel to the, the professional, the medical profession, like, how is this happening? Um, but it became kind of a common theme. But we now know scientifically that the heart actually stores information. Science has discovered that there are actually cells, 40,000 neurons in the heart and these neurons act as a brain. They feel, record life experiences independent from your brain. So in your heart, the physical heart, there are cells that act as a heart brain. This is science, this is not metaphysical. So it's fascinating, isn't it? That we have this brain that actually works independent of the other brain. So metaphysically, what have we said all of our lives? Follow your heart. Follow your heart. Go within. Anytime you're going within, aren't you going into your heart? So the whole concept of following our heart is metaphysically sound to us. Science validating it is new. This is something new uh, recently. Um, one of the teachers said this. Our brain, because of the right and left aspect of the brain, works in polarity thinking. So you'll go right, left, you'll go right, left about anything we're trying to make a decision. You'll see all of the possibilities. Well, this, well, this. Well, good, well, fail. Well, this, well, this, well, this, or this. And you guys know this experience, right? The heart brain, the cells that are actually in the heart are single. They don't bounce back and forth. There is an energy within the cells of the brain and the heart that have one truth rather than the analysis of possibilities back and forth, right? And you, you know when you're in your, your uh, mental brain thinking, right, left, right, left, you really doubt any decision you make, don't you? It's like, uh, well, then this, the, well, then this, and it's, nothing brings you to center, nothing brings you to that point of wholeness. The heart brain is your truth meter. Now, I've heard of the truth meter since I was a, a young woman in metaphysics, and I knew it. When someone made that phrase, heard, introduced that phrase to me, the truth meter, you guys have heard it? I knew exactly what they were talking about. Because innate within my heart, I knew if there was valid, if something was valid, if it was mixed, if it was not for me. There's just something that we know that we cannot explain that's within that heart center. And that is where that sense of truth lies. So the heart has a knowing that is beyond the rational thought. The heart has a knowing of truth that the brain did not learn. You guys with me? All right. I wanted to share just a quick story about uh, Agent N. I love Agent N. Some, one of Jesus, when he was a young man, was teaching, and this was a, a priest who snuck in the dead of night to try to get the truth from him. And Jesus speaks to him truth, and Jesus is very honest with him. I'm not hiding anything from anybody. Uh, you can't buy information. I'm not going to become part of your religion. If you want to learn from me, you have to do it openly and honestly. And he teaches Agent in about God being in the heart of every man, that the Christ of God is in the heart of every man. It's universal love. There's not some rule to serve. It's universal love. And this is what I wanted to share with you guys. 
When Ajanin left, he could not comprehend the truth that Jesus spoke. He saw what he had never seen before. He was being given information that was not filed in his brain, left and right. He had never heard what Jesus had said before. It made no sense to him. The realm of faith he had never explored, he touched. In his heart, in his heart, seeds of faith and universal brotherhood had found good soil. Jesus was planting seeds. As he journeyed to his home, he seemed to sleep, to pass through the darkest night. And when he awoke, the son of righteousness had arisen and he found the king. This is when the heart reveals the truth to the brain. It's when we wake up and the heart hears and we hear the heart. This is when those moments arise where we finally go, ah, the ahas, the ahas. You know those aha, mom, aha moments. And I'm telling you, every single one of you will share an aha moment with me, and your spouse will look at you and say, I have been telling you the very, those very words for years. And you did not hear me. And they did not. But it took a moment where the light came on and the heart opened and they saw the truth. You guys with me? The relevance of the heart. Okay. So Jesus is always teaching about the light in the heart. We talked about opening our heart last week. When we meditate, we go within. When you go within, where do you go? Do you go within your arm or your leg? <laughs> you go within your heart. It's always go within your heart. So in our knowing and in our spiritual track, we have a knowing of that spiritual awareness within our heart. In this knowing... You do not have to defend your position or explain it. It is your truth. When you go into that heart and you say, what am I feeling? If you get any answer from the heart, there is a peace around it. And if somebody asks you, why are you saying that? What do you say? Yeah, I have no logical information to validate what I'm saying. All I know is it's from my heart, and it's my truth, and this is my truth, and I'm going to stand in it, whether it makes sense to you or not. It's my truth. And your heart will guide you to turn right or left. Your heart will guide you to do this or that. Call, don't call. Simple little tiny things in your life, your heart will guide you. And you have no idea what the entire matrix of the situation is, but your heart knows. Your heart knows because it's connected. So the knowing you don't have to defend. It is your truth meter. Jesus always said, he that hath an ear, let him hear. He really said, he that hath a heart, let him listen. Because when you can open that heart, you can really hear what I'm saying. So I wanted to give you three questions to ask yourself to access the heart. When you're experiencing the journey from the head to the heart, that also in metaphysics many years ago, they, they said the longest journey is from your head to your heart. But the reality is, the impulses of the brain in your heart sends more information to your brain than your brain sends to your heart, and that's medical. The impulses from the heart brain, which is medical, sends more impulses this way than come this way to it. So who would you say is really in charge? The heart, when we can hear it. So to move from our reactionary head thinking, we have to listen from our heart. We have to move to heart listening when we're in any situation. And we have to just stop, even in the middle of a conversation, and say, what is the greater truth here? And then you feel, what is here for me to see? And you feel, and how do I need to interact? And then you feel. And whatever energy is coming from your heart in that moment is right and perfect for you. Is it right and perfect for the person that's talking to you? At some level, yes. Their ego may say no. Their ego may say, no, we, we need to fight this out. Well, it's just not mine to do right now. Their ego may say, well, blah, blah. Well, I need to, I need to take your power away by calling you unkind things. OK, what is true for me? Yeah, I'm not those things. You know, going in, what is the greater truth? What is here for me to see? And how do I need to interact? That's the heart-based 
pattern of listening. You guys got it? How often can you employ this? All the time. Always. Always. If you're having a hard time moving from your mental mind to your heart, there is also medicine tells us that wherever you touch your body, your focus goes. So if you take your hand and you touch the heart chakra or the, over the organ itself, your mental focus will actually go to that part of your body. So if you're having a moment where you're having an exchange and you're going, okay, okay, let me breathe. <laughs> Let me touch my body, let me touch my heart, let me touch my heart chakra. Just breathe. Do it for me real quick. Put your heart on your, on your chest and just take a breath. Does not your focus go to the chest? Can you not feel the vibrating in your chest? And now if we're going to look deeper, you can, you can let go, but if we're going to go deeper, we can then ask, what is the truth that I'm feeling? We can ask those questions because now we've got to focus on the location of the brain that we're talking to, which is in the heart. It's, I love it when science validates metaphysics, don't you? Yes. I love this. Okay. True freedom comes when you stop responding from the polarity brain and start responding from your heart brain. True freedom comes when you stop responding from the polarity and start responding from here. With me? Okay. The heart brain is actually seeking to direct you. And I wanted to share in the big book. This, again, is Love Without End, Glenda Green. I love this book. And she's having conversations with Jesus. And um, there are many different uh, copies of this book, so the page number won't help you, but it's the chapter about your heart is your higher intelligence. And Jesus is speaking to her. The heart, which is your connecting link to God and the universe, integrates your own unique center of experience, awareness, and character with to that which is beyond your comprehension. Your heart is linking you to that which is beyond your comprehension here. The heart is essentially the center point of stillness and peace from which infinity is revealed. A person's soul is the integrated oneness of love, spirit, particles, experience, deeds, hopes, and dreams which comprise his life. A person's soul is the integrated oneness of all these things. The heart is the soul's gateway. The heart is the gateway to the soul. This is the soul's gateway both into life and to beyond, into in eternity. The heart is the timeless and indestructible source of all higher knowledge. It is the point within each person where the inner and outer forces are the same. Within the heart, the will of God and your own may be brought into harmony. Okay. By entering the portals of the heart, you will inherit the wisdom that was placed there for you from the beginning. How powerful is that? Okay. I know this is something that you know we talk about all the time, but I want you to hear it at a new level. This is actually a space medically supported where we are connected with God. You know, science has been arguing the God spot in your head, which metaphysically we know is there. They're arguing that they haven't found it yet. But they cannot argue the heart because they've found it. This is the, metaphysical affirma the medical affirmation of the metaphysical. All right. So when we act from our heart, how do we get there for that? We know how to listen, right? You know how important it is to listen. So... This is what Spirit said. When you get an answer from your heart, and you've all received one, do you not feel the fullness of it? In that fullness is everything you need to make it happen. In that fullness is the energy, not only the impetus to make it happen, but it's the energy of everything that you'll need for every detail around it. 
And it's like the universe saying, I'm picking you up and putting you right in the right and perfect place and supplying you with everything you need. That is that fullness that you feel in the flow of the universal rightness. Even if it may not, you may not understand it, or even if other people are involved, and you know they may not react to you positively. Isn't that a fear most of us have? If I say this, I will not be reacted to positively. It's been my experience that if I tell anybody, I am truly guided from my heart, blah, 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 they say nothing. There's nothing to argue. You know, I am truly guided from my heart. And I said that before I was ordained. I am truly guided from my heart to do this. And they go, okay, and they'll leave, they leave you alone. But we have a certainty that this is the right decision, this is the right choice and the right path because of the fullness that we're feeling. We just know. You know, we're growing our faith in this world, faith in God, faith in love. When you go to the heart, you're almost bypassing faith. You're walking in knowing. And it's a lot more solid because then you trust whatever is going to happen is for the highest and best for all concerned. I am in my right and perfect place and this is the highest and best for all concerned. I don't have to judge it. I don't have to have a second thought about it. Okay? Even when things get crunchy, there is a sense of this is meant to be. This is meant to be. So we sail through it to the conclusion of it. Okay? I wanted to share this that I don't read often. This is what Jesus is talking about, the hearts of men. This is in chapter 101. Oh, this is the Sermon on the Mount still. All right, this is what he says. The good man from the treasures of his heart sends blessedness and peace to all the world. The evil man sends thoughts that blight and wither hope and joy and fill the world with wretchedness and woe. Men think and act and speak out of the abundance of their heart. He who hears the words of life and in an honest, sincere heart receives and treasures them and lives the holy life is like the man who builds his house upon the rock. The floods may come, the winds may blow, the storms may beat upon his house. It is not moved. Go forth and build your life upon the solid rock of truth, and all the powers of the evil one will shake it not. And then he was complete. Are you feeling the energy of the heart versus the brain? Are you feeling a greater depth to when you go within to seek your answers. You know this. This is like repeat for you, correct? Everybody knows this, but how often do we do it? How often do we actually sit and try to hear? Some of us, if it doesn't meet, something does not meet our understanding of how the universe works, and it's like, this is not God. This is not how it flows here, people. God, you know, God, this is not how it flows. The minute we move into a space of that, any control, any judgment thought, we are separating from our heart truth. And we can actually live there confused forever. We love God so much, we meditate so much, we love God so much, yet we don't understand one thing that happened. And it can throw us into quite a tizzy until we hit that moment of truth where there's wisdom. Do you guys know with me? Okay. Um, all right, I'll share an example. <laughs> Cindy's stories. So here's my example. So you guys know, because I've been aching about it for a year and a half. When I was hit in the car, and my spirit got popped out of my body, and I'm at the roof of the car, I see my higher self, and I see the white light here. It's a huge opening of the white light. Of course, I've been going through my, my healing and everything, but what troubled me so much was I did not feel God, and where the heck was Jesus? 
where is Jesus? I just got popped out of my body. I'm not in my body. There's a white light. My higher self's there. Where's Jesus? Where's God? And it has troubled my soul to the max for a year and a half. And I've prayed and cried and prayed and cried and prayed and cried because, really. And then the voice from the white light said, Cindy, get back in your car. Your car's in motion. Get back in your body. Your car's in motion. You need to stop your car. I was back in my body, and I stopped my car. And then the process. A year and a half, where was God? God, where were you? I finally heard. They said very carefully and very lovingly, Cindy, quit whining. Had you entered the white light, it would have been full-on God. You had popped out just like any other ghost walking the earth plane. You were in the ethers above the earth. You had not entered the light. You had not entered where Jesus meets you. You had not entered that. Had you gone there, it would have been everything you expected. Okay. (laughs) Do you hear me? Because I know God greets you. I know the light. I know Jesus is there. I know the feeling of it. I know what I'm supposed to feel. And I didn't feel it. I felt totally disconnected and confused. But how long did it take me to hear it? <laughs> it took me a year and a half to hear it. And when I heard it, I went, oh, thank you, God. You didn't leave me. <gasps> okay. <laughs> Breathe it in. But it didn't match my perception of all the crossing overs that I've helped people do, that I've seen people go through. It just didn't match it. I never forgot. I forgot that I hadn't crossed over. I forgot that one little bit of information. (laughs) But do you hear? We can get caught in our perceptions of what we think it needs to be and how it needs to be looked or how we were trained for it to look and get caught in our question. And we were caught in our question. We're spinning, 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 and we forget to trust there is a magical truth here. There's a magical truth in our heart that will always reveal to us what, how, the bigger picture. Always take us to that presence of God. You guys with me? Okay, let's go ahead and anchor this in, and let's just put our feet on the floor. Take a breath. And Father, Mother God, we ask that what we now do be for the highest blessing of all concerned. Ask Jesus Christ to stand with each one. And I would invite you all just to feel that beautiful calm of light come over you, a calm that embraces your arc filled with the love of Father, Mother, God coming over you now. And your eyes are closed, and you are in your own field. And I want to invite you to physically touch your chest, touch your heart center. And as you do, begin to feel the human part of you. I am the divine child of God expressing in this dimension this reality, this that we call human. And Father, I ask that my heart now open. I ask to feel your love flowing through me. And consciously breathe slowly, just breathing in and out. Feeling that your divinity can be touched by your fingertips. The Christ I am is in me. The love of God is connected through me. And I am expressing that love. Just breathe and just gently feel yourself. 
Feel that divine part of you. I am God's child. And you may ask one question. Is there a truth about me I can see now? And you may feel, you may not, but whatever question you ask is planted in the soil of your soul. Is there a truth I can know about myself now? And Father, Mother, God, as we feel your love, we give our love back. We are your children. And we stand in that circle of love. We receive and we love you. And just imagine a light moving through your body. Just feeling the cells. Feel the peace, and you can put your hand down. Feel your energy body, and we thank you, God, for this healing. Allow your presence, your consciousness to go to the chair. Feel your feet, and feel your oneness with God, and take a breath. And you can gently open your eyes. How simple is spirit? How simple is that touch that takes us to the eternity that we are? And once there, anything can open for you. Whatever you need, whatever you're seeking is there for you. So your homework this week is pretty big, isn't it? Heart listening and heart acting. Let's give it a go. Say yay God. Yay God.